Hello and welcome to part 3 in this series of tutorial videos for new members of the Goon Swarm Federation Alliance. This chapter will look at how you can create skill plans for your character that match the goals that you have and what existing resources there are available for this. The first thing you want to do is open Evemon. This is one of the tools you installed as part of the first video in this series. It is the standard tool used to design skill plans and to monitor the training status of your characters. In addition to skill tracking and planning, Evemon has many other features which I will not showcase in this video. To add your character to Evemon, you must import an API key for your account. In order to create an API key, you need to open the API management website for EVE Online. The URL for this is in the video description as always. Log in here with your EVE Online account. Note that when using API keys you will always want to create a new API key for every application that requires one. This is for technical reasons and the CCP systems have problems if multiple applications use the same API key. It is also useful for security so you can revoke the API key used by a specific application. Once you are logged in, create a new API key and give it a significant name that allows you to identify it later, for example Evemon. You can leave the character set to all, this will allow the same API key to be used to access all characters on this account. Make sure to mark no expiry. Evemon can make use of almost all of this data, so just because I don't want to think about it, I'm going to give it full access. Now copy and paste this key ID and this verification code into Evemon. And then you can close the browser and continue adding your character. There we go, my character is now imported. Once you click on the character, the details page opens. Let's begin by downloading and importing the 60 day skill plan for newbies. This is a standard skill plan made by the Goon Swarm mentors and should set you up with all the basics that you need. Once it's downloaded, go to Evemon and select import plan from file. Now just select it from your downloads and click OK. Now this plan will be visible under the plans menu. When you click on it, the skill plan is opened and you can see all the skills that are part of this plan. The forum post goes into more detail about what exactly this provides you, but in essence these are useful skills for just about everything and you are highly recommended to train all of these skills before continuing to more advanced skill plans. The colors in the skill plan are meaningful. Red means that you do not have one of the prerequisite skills trained. For example, contracting requires social to be trained to level 1 and it will stay red until you have trained social. Gray means that you do not have this skill book injected. And if you hover over an item, you will see a tooltip. And this tooltip will also tell you whether you actually own the skill book. This will help you avoid purchasing the same skill book twice. Once you have your skill plan set up in Eve 1, you can hit the copy to clipboard button. Make sure all the checkboxes are unchecked and hit OK. This will copy the skill plan to the clipboard and then you can just paste it in game into the skill training queue. Once in game, simply hit Alt and X to open the skill queue. In this training queue, you have in the top left corner a menu that allows you to add the copied skills or to replace the existing queue with the skills you have copied. I'm just going to hit the replace. It will inform you about any skills you do not have injected and because this is a trial account it will also not let me actually add many skills to the skill plan. But this is the easy way to add skills to a skill queue without manually dragging and dropping 50 different skills. After you are set up with a basic 60 day skill plan you will want to think about specializing. Depending on what you want to specialize in you will want to specialize into different doctrines. In the forums you will find the forum post with the Goonsform Federation strategic doctrines. This lists all the ships, all the fits that are used for important serious business fleets. 
you are highly recommended to train into these to get into fleet PvP as soon as you can. We have around five or six strategic doctrines. Here is Das Boot, one of the strategic doctrines. If you expand the various regions of this page, you will find all the ships listed, together with all the fits. Many of the fits and ships you find here require quite high skill points to use. So let's try to find something more newbie friendly. The Harpy fleet is a very popular doctrine in peacetime. Let's take a look at how you can import the various ship fits and turn them into skill plans and how you can ensure that you are able to fly a ship very well. Find the relevant ship fit on this page, for example the Harpy, and copy the EFT block. In Evemon, create a new plan and hit the loadout import button. The most important thing here is the estimated training time, 33 days. Note that some of this will already be covered by the 60 day skill plan, but in essence you can get a good idea of how long it will take you to get into a doctrine ship. Hit the add to plan button and Evemon will create you a basic skill plan. Note that the automatically generated skill plan will only include the bare minimum skills you need to sit in the ship with all the modules online. It will not necessarily make you fly the ship well. For example, the Harpy has some hull bonuses. Let's take a look at what they are. For every level of Kaldari Frigate you get some bonuses, but Kaldari Frigate must be at level 5 anyway to use the Harpy, so this doesn't really matter. But also see this, for every level of Assault Frigates you get some damage and optimal range. Now this is very important because the Harpy is a sniper ship. You want to have all the range you can get. So you should train Assault Frigates to a higher level than the minimum. For example level 4. The same applies to many other skills, some of which may not even be listed in the automatically generated skill plan. A simple way to find out is to take this basic harpy fit and fly it in a fleet. You will see things like your capacitor runs out fast or maybe your ship is slower than other people in the fleet. Based on such feedback you can adjust your skill plan and add additional support skills. It's also useful to go through all the minimal skills and make sure that they are all trained to a meaningful level. For example here we see long range targeting is required at level 1 to fly the harpy but really you want to be able to target far so let's make this level 4 as well. Shield upgrades. It reduces shield upgrade power grid needs. Now this is very important because Evemon doesn't know what sort of fitting skills are needed in order to actually fit all the modules in your ship and the harpy actually does require some good fitting skills. So reduction in shield upgrade power grid needs is probably very important. Let's make this level 4. You will find this out anyway if you go and into the game and sit in the ship and suddenly you get a message from the game that you cannot turn on the modules online because you do not have enough power grid. None of the rest here look like they need to be upped to a higher level. What you can also do is go through the skill browser and manually try to find relevant skills for you. There are definitely many of those. For example, the Harpy is a ship that shoots other ships so for sure you will find many useful skills under gunnery. There are many skills here and to start off I recommend you train them to level 3 simply because that's a very fast train for all of them. Let's set a whole bunch of them to level 3 here. All the ones I'm selecting are important for the Harpy. You will eventually want to train them to at least level 4 and some of those maybe to level 5 because they benefit all ships, not only the Harpy. There we go, this added quite a bit of training time, but since it's only level 3, not that much. All ships also benefit from the various CPU management and power grid management skills. Most strategic doctrines require you to have these at level 5 and also require weapon upgrades which further reduces the fitting needs of weapons. You'll want weapon upgrades at level 5 and probably in the future you will also want to train advanced weapon upgrades to at least level 3. Capacitor is very important. You will want to have this at level 4 and capacitor systems operation eventually at level 5. You don't necessarily need to train them all so high immediately. I'm just giving you an example here of how you can ensure that your character can be very efficient at operating some ship. Many of these skills will benefit all ships, so you will only need to train them once. 
There are more skills I did not show here. Go through the full skill browser, look at every skill, and feel free to ask for help in little bees if you are not certain about something. The same principles apply to all other ships, so feel free to look through the fits in the forum, look at the doctrines. Note that the strategic doctrines are not all. There are also other doctrines used, some of which you will find in the war room. For example, Ferox Fleet is a doctrine, an experimental one just used in peacetime. Ratting and PvE have their own specialized doctrines, which you will find in the Player vs. Everything forum. The uh, Ratting Ship Doctrine post is this semi AFK Ratting Zone. Here you will find the standard fits for Ratting Ship Doctrines. Also note that various six and squads, which I will discuss in a later video, have their own specialized doctrines. So if you are, for example, a member of Space Violence, you will want to read the Space Violence forum, because Space Violence will have their own doctrines. In this case, the doctrines are in this thread, which I will not show you, because they are secret. When we talk about skill plans, it is important to know what the concept of attributes does. They are a terrible feature of the game, but they exist, so you should know about them. You will see in Evemont a primary and secondary column. This indicates what attributes of your character this skill benefits from. The point is that if a skill lists a certain attribute here, it will train faster if you have that attribute higher. The default attributes are 20, 20, 19, 20, 20, which you can see in my current character. You can change these, although the number of times you can change these is limited to once a year, plus a few bonus remaps that you get when you sign up. If your perception is, for example, higher than 20, then these skills will train at a faster rate. The secondary will affect the training time in the same way, but less. Conversely, this skill benefits from intelligence and memory, so if you have perception set to high, then you will also need to set other skills to low, and these other skills may therefore train slower. This invites a lot of people to really nerd out and start to optimize their order of their skill plan. Do not do that. Train skills in the order that you want, and try to forget that attributes exist. What you can do is make a big skill plan with everything you can think of that you want or might want to train within the next however long a period you can think of, and hit this Optimize Attributes button. Then hit the middle button, and it will tell you what attributes you want for the current skills. This will be the best combination that will give you the best training time. For example, this optimization gives me two days of my current skill plan, which is a fair improvement. Of course, it does mean that some skills, for example, you can see Assault Frigates here, is plus one minute. Some skills will train slower. So there is a trade-off involved. But in general, don't worry about this. This is not worth the effort and the worry, and definitely do not start to reorder your skill plan to optimize for this, because that's just retarded. The default attributes that CCP gives you when you create a character are not very optimal. If you wish to focus on PvP and ships and fighting, then you are recommended to train exactly as Evemon currently gave me, with the points all distributed between intelligence and perception. This gives you good training for all the ship-related skills, and at the same time it penalizes less used skills like trading and marketing and industry, which most people will not use. You can further boost the attributes by using implants, these can give you between 1 and 5 extra attribute points. You are recommended to always use plus 3 implants. I will show you how to use them in game. Let's now remap the attributes of my character to intelligence and perception as I recommend. Open the character sheet by either clicking the portrait or pressing Alt and A. And go to the attributes tab. Let's remap now. What we want is perception and intelligence. Note that the order of these things in game and in Evemon is different, so don't use your visual memory. There we go, perception and intelligence are at 24. This is what I want. I will save the changes, and now my skills will train a bit faster. You can get some free starter implants from the forums, there is a thread for free implants, but you can also buy implants on the market. The implants for plus 3 attributes 
are fairly affordable and I recommend you always use them. Their name ends with dash space basic, which is an easy way to find all the plus three implants. I generally don't look at what specific implants I need, what specific attributes my skills are using. I just plug in all of these except for the social adaptation chip. This is for the charisma attribute, which is very rarely used, only for training, trading, marketing, industry and leadership skills. I almost never train those skills on my characters. Now you will notice I don't actually have the skills to use implants, so I will demonstrate how they work on a different character. Alright, I am now on my main character and I should not currently have any implants in. You can see your implants under augmentations. I have none, because I just died. Every time you get your pod killed, you will lose all your implants. But that's fine, no big deal, they are cheap. So let's set me up with some new implants. I'm using plus threes, so you can easily search by the basic suffix. And I'm just going to select all of these, right click and plug in. And now I have all these plus three implants plugged in, and that's it. Do not let the fact that they get destroyed scare you from PvP. The PvP aspect of this game is the most rewarding and the most fun. You are a rich goon, you can definitely afford these implants, and if you cannot, well, just ask in chat. I'm sure some other rich goon will happily give you the isk for a full set of implants. Don't worry about it. Losing things when you die is fine, just buy more you have the ISK. That about covers it when it comes to making your skill plans and tracking your character's skill training. It is very individual and really depends on your goals. For any advice on making your skill plan, feel free to speak up in the Little Beast channel on Jabber. The main thing about skill plans is just not to worry too much about them. Use them as a template, but you don't need to follow them religiously. If you really feel like training something, go ahead, train it right away, postpone everything else, don't worry about it. Skill plans are just a tool to help you plan for what you wish to do, and if you think you want to do something else, don't worry, just scrap the skill plan, do something else. Don't worry about attributes too much, this is all secondary to actually playing the game. That's it for this video. Uh, see you in the next video, which introduces some fleet PvP concepts and shows you how to get into a fight.